welcome everyone. Welcome for the people who are here in uh, Le Wagon campus. It's great to receive you today. Welcome to the people who are watching us on Livestorm. Thanks for joining us for this great demo day. I am MG, Marie-Gabrielle, the co-founder of Le Wagon in uh, Montreal. And it's a great pleasure to welcome you today for our demo day. Um, it's been such a long time we haven't been able to do it uh, live in campus, uh, receiving uh, people at the same time here and remotely. So it's, we are very, very uh, excited to, uh, to do this demo. Um, so for people joining us in Livestorm, please feel free to introduce yourself in the chat section. Let us know where you're from, why you want to join this demo today. Uh, we'll be glad to uh, interact with you uh, online. Um, also for people in Livestorm and people joining us in Facebook Live and LinkedIn, if you have any questions during this demo, we'll have a question period at the end. So feel free to, ans to ask any questions you would have. For Livestorm, it will be on the question tab. And for uh, Facebook and LinkedIn, you just have to send your question in the comment section. So feel free to ask any questions during this demo and we'll be able to answer them. The students will be able to answer them at the end of the demo. All right, so let's start, right? It's a very exciting moment uh, because it's the last day of a very intensive nine week program for both our students in web development and data science. Uh, and today we are really looking forward to uh, watch the uh, three products they've been building, uh, working very hard to build the past two weeks. So let's start because we are all physically here. Let's start with a huge round of applause. I want to hear claps. <laughs> Woo! That's great. I like it. All right. But before to start, for those who don't know us yet, I will go over a few information about who we are at Le Wagon. So Le Wagon is a coding school. We uh, bring technical skills to creative people, to entrepreneurs, to people willing to change careers. Uh, it's been uh, launched uh, eight years ago in Paris first, and now we are in 45 cities around the world. Um, and one of the most acclaimed coding bootcamp, we are very proud to receive great reviews from our alumni. Uh, we have, uh, so today what you're going to see is actually the web development program and the data science graduate. Uh, and they're actually joining uh, almost 300 more alumni in the world. So welcome to the family. Uh, congratulations again for all of you today who is joining this uh, global community. We are very happy to have you in our community. Uh, we put a lot of emphasis into practice at Le Wagon. That's why you're going to discover something very practical, the product they built. Um, we have two main courses, uh, one in uh, web development, uh, which is uh, focused on learning how to code and become a web developer. And another one, uh, which is data science, which, is, uh, which provides all the skills needed to uh, work in a data science team data analysis, Python, machine learning, deep learning, you're going to see the results of this, uh, of this uh, teaching and learning uh, today. All right, so you will notice also that our students come from very, very diverse backgrounds, not just cultural backgrounds, but also academic backgrounds, professional backgrounds. Some have just finished university. Some have not finished yet university. Some have been working on unrelated fields uh, for many years and related to tech. Some have worked in fields related to tech. So there's a great variety of different profiles, which makes great hybrid uh, professional after the bootcamp. They all have different goals, different paths they would want to take after bootcamp. Some of them would want to become web developer, other would want to become data analyst, other would want to launch their startup, other would be willing to do some freelancing uh, or other tech related jobs such as uh, product management or any other kind of technical role. So um, now it's time to discover the first group, the project of the first group of our students, the web development group. Um, in the past nine weeks, I just wanted to give you a perspective and a context of what they've been learning uh, in just nine weeks. They have learned how to code, how to build an app, how to work and think like real developers, how to understand the workflow of coding a product, and 
most importantly, they also learned how to learn, which is a great asset to have in life. So for those of you who have never coded before, you can't imagine how challenging it is to be able to code an app in just nine days, uh, what you're going to see tonight. Uh, especially since nine weeks ago, most of them didn't know how to code one line of code. So it's very impressive. I'm really impressed by your hard work, dedication, and what you managed to uh, deliver and what we're going to see today. So they went from scratch from all the steps to build an app, you know, from the design thinking, uh, from the UI, UX of their app to the pitch. They actually practice a lot to uh, deliver a great pitch tonight. So trust me, you're going to be very impressed. I am already very impressed. And uh, just for that, let's give them another round of applause. <laughs> Are we ready to start now? So I'm going to welcome the first team, Taste Together team. Uh, Isabel, she's actually live uh, with us from BC. We have here Nadav, Dylan, and Tien. Tien and Nadav are backstage here, so you can you can see them later on. So they build an app called um, Taste Together. It's an app to connect with foodies and share testing experiences. Hi everyone, I'm Meg. I'm sure I'm not the only one here today who loves food, but I'm a bit at a loss right now in my foodie life. I love tasting and discussions about food, but my friends are more on the safe side. I had a great foodie friend, Anne, but she moved. And since then, I have only uh, options to rely on like on restaurants or wineries, but I'm str struggling to find other options. Anne told me that she started to use that app, Pace Together, and I want to check it out. She thinks it would be fantastic for me to find great tasting experiences, great for my sweet tooth, and where I could really discover new flavors, compare them in the kind of setting I like, you know, more personal. And just by the first glance at it, wow, there's a lot of options already. This could be really a solution for me. Okay. Let's have a look maybe at the first one, the one that is the closest to me to start with. And I see, wow, not even a kilometer away. And gelato, well, that's kind of in my array for sure. Oh, there's, it's even popular. There's a lot of guests already attending. That's a good one to keep in mind, but let's have a look at other sweet offer. Okay, so gelato, oh, chocolate for sure. Okay, but it reminds me, my friend Anne told me that there's that great tasting event in chocolate uh, about chocolate happening in Montreal soon. And the host is Corinne, I think. So let's see if I can find it. Wow, that's exactly the one I'm looking for. From the beans to the bar. Imagine, chocolate made from scratch. That would really be a great experience for me. I'm curious to know more about Corinne. What's her background? Wow, she's a foodie just like me. She loves coffee and chocolate. She's an architect. That's fantastic. It's really what I'm looking for. So let's reach uh, out uh, right away for her. I'll tell her that I'm a graphic designer and uh, that I love everything about chocolate. And hopefully she'll get back to me soon. Great. Wow, that was simple. And Looking at all of those tasting really inspiring me. I could invite people to. I already have a great idea. I could have a tasting about liquid gold. Yes, of course, maple syrup. I've got like close to a dozen different syrup and it would be super interesting to compare them. So I'll have that at my place, 888 Wellington. Uh, and I'll schedule that for, well, this Tuesday, the 7th at 5. Yeah, let's make it early before dinner. It's the best time for sweets. Um, I think I can host six people. I've got enough for six. I'll put a nice picture to make sure that it's uh, appealing and that people are interested in, uh, 
in that and that sweet for sure i'll tag that sweet and local because it's a local product and it's important wow that was cool so now it's up there for people to attend oh corinne sent me a message already so i'm in that great chocolate tasting this is great okay i need to ask her if i need to bring something that chat is great. I It feels good to be able to ask questions and chat with the host before. And what's that? That's a request now. Oh, for my tasting already? And that's Lorenzo. And Lorenzo was the host from the, the gelato tasting. Of course, I would love to have him join. He will be my first guest for my first tasting. This is fantastic. I'll just let him know. Quickly, just send, send him a quick welcome for the, the for the tasting. What an amazing week I will have. From struggling to find options to this. Wow, I did not think a single app could be could do so much for me. I will never be a lonely foodie anymore. Thanks to Taste Together. Congratulations, wow, great, great pitch. So now let's move on to the next project. I want to welcome on stage Andrea and Etienne. So along with Van, they actually built Altruist, which is an app to let you explore volunteering opportunities based on your preferences. So please, Andrea and Etienne, the stage is yours. Hello, hello. Okay, perfect. Hey, I'm taking off. <laughs> All right. Bonjour tout le monde. My name is Juliette. I'm 22 years old, and I just graduated from Concordia University. I've always wanted to volunteer, but honestly, I could never get past the search process. It's so difficult to find an organization online. I mean, most of the sites just have outdated information, or they're confusing. And even if I can find an app that promises to help me find organizations nearby, they never serve Quebec. It was really frustrating dealing with all of that until I discovered Altruist. It's an app that not only has tons of up-to-date organization listings throughout Quebec, but it helps you personalize your search with location and interest so you can find the perfect place to volunteer. As soon as I found out about Altruist, I made a profile, but I haven't really looked at the app yet, so let's take a look. Okay, so definitely got a lot of organizations, and this is just in Montreal. Um, some of them are good, but some of them, no. I mean, Association Québécoise de Voile, I get seasick. Um, Montreal École, I'm really not good with kids. Um, I saw something that said volunteer now, and I mean, that's what I want to do, so let's see what happens. Okay, they want me to make a profile. Near what locations would you like to volunteer? Well. I guess home would be a good place to start. I mean, I am, you know, going to be volunteering from home a lot, I guess. And I mean, my place is on green, so theoretically it's in Westmount. There should be a lot of places nearby. Um, it's interesting that we can put more than one address at a time. Um, thinking of any other places I go in a week, um, I guess work would be one. Um, and yeah, now that I think about it, I changed my schedule around. So. On Thursdays, I get off work early, and I could maybe just volunteer straight from my work at Kesgrain to um, the organization in the afternoon. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I'm trying to think if there's any other addresses. Maybe something by my parents' place, but I'll be honest, I don't visit them often enough. I'll just leave it as it is. <laughs> For which causes would I like to volunteer? I mean, homelessness, that's definitely an important one. Such a huge problem, and I'd love to help any way that I could. What other options do I have? Um, oh, senior care, that's so important. Older people appreciate it so much when there's someone around to listen to their stories. Where does this take me? Selected for you, okay. Well, okay, so there's a lot of options here too, and they're all right up my alley. I mean, I don't even have to dig for this. Entrée de Metro, Metro, okay. And that's like four kilometers away from my house. That's really close. Mm, okay, yeah, so. This looks interesting, but I think I'm gonna end up volunteering from work on Thursday. So maybe I should find something closer to my work instead. 
Um, the yellow door. Okay, it's only 2.3 kilometers from my work. That's perfect. And all the contact information is there, established in 1972, so I know it's legit. I think I'd really love to volunteer at an organization like this. I'm going to reach out and, you know, see if we can get connected. And I'm connected. Looks like Altruis works pretty fast. Um, you know, I'm really excited to volunteer. I think I'm going to go ahead and get started next week. One week later. <laughs> Oh, wow. I just finished my first shift at the Yellow Door, and it was a beautiful experience. Altruist has been such a great... Oh, what is this? Okay, journal entries. This is the very beginning of your journal entries with the Yellow Door. Oh, wow, this is so great. Okay, so in the application, I can make notes of all of the people that I meet, all of the stories that I hear, and do that for the rest of the time I volunteer. That's really cool. Today, for example, I met this woman named Ada. She's so funny. She talked my ear off about the 60s and all of her experiences. I really don't want to get into that right now, but it sounds like it was a crazy time. Wow. So honestly, like, I'm really excited about this new journey, and I'm really, really grateful. Altruist made it so easy to find an organization that I fell in love with, and it's going to be so easy to track my wonderful experiences along the way. An app that helps me helps others. Hmm. Sounds pretty cool. Thanks, Altruist. Good job, team. Good job. Congratulations for this. So now I would like uh, to invite uh, one of our data science teachers on stage, a uh, great inspiration for our data students. Lucas, please uh, come on stage. So Lucas is uh, one of our teach lead teacher. He's been leading a lot during this batch. A data expert, uh, wizard, I would say. So <laughs> I will let you uh, introduce the teams. All right, thank you, MG. So uh, imagine this. Imagine you just heard about the name data science. What do you think it is? You imagine people in lab coats and stuff, right? That's not what it is. And nine weeks ago, that's where a very special group of people here, the data science batch, found themselves in. They didn't know what data science was. And inside two months, they learned everything about coding in Python, acquiring data, cleaning data, massaging data, asking questions of data, with statistics, with probability, mathematics. They learned about machine learning, they learned about deep learning, they learned about AI, and they learned about the cloud all in two months to deliver to you guys something that you're gonna see in a few seconds, a very awesome product. Let's give a round of applause to Eugene, Chidi, Luis, and Joachim presenting a very nice solution for a problem we all have. When you eat something and it comes in some weird package, is that thing recyclable or not? Waste assist. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Joachim and following hard on the foot of chocolate and volunteering, I'm, I'm going to tell you about waste assist and I'm going to tell you about trash. Yeah. So we all know about recycling. Recycling happens out there. Can Canadians throw a lot. A lot of that gets recycled, but there are problems. There are, for example, material mismatches happening at recycling facilities, and these material mismatches cause extensive delays and really mean that far less gets recycled than should be. Also, 25% of the recyclable waste, 25% of the stuff that's really available for recycling never gets there, gets contaminated and goes directly into the landfills. Reducing these 25% by one percentage point can save the city of Toronto, for example, around $800,000 dollars per year and something very similar applies to Montreal of course so what 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 have we done about it we've come up with an app and a product waste this is classification our app tells <coughs> it tells people how to recycle the stuff they've got if there's any uncertainty automatic recognition automatic image recognition helps them uh, come to a conclusion 
Waste assist detection, our product does even more. It uses object detection models to essentially analyze um, <coughs> and detect objects in a video stream or objects in the wild in real time, telling you exactly what to do with them. And uh, at this point, I hand over to Eugene, who will tell you a bit about the classification. <clears throat> All good. So before we actually show you this thing, let's take a look a little bit under its hood. To, you know, how did we arrive to this product? And the first thing we need to look at is the data set, which is one of the most important thing in a deep learning model. Without it, you cannot properly tra train the model to, to give, properly differentiate what you want it to differentiate. So we used two data sets and we combined them together to give them a little bit, bit more volume to get a total of seven category, main categories of trash, which is glass, plastic, cardboard, metal, paper, trash, and compost. And in total, working it around, we got around 3,000 images, which is a fairly small data set by today's um, machine learning star standards, but for us, it made the job done. And we divided it into an 80 to 20% train and validation set. So we started working at it. We started with a family of neural networks called convolutional neural networks, CNNs. We started, started building one for, for, from scratch just to experiment and, you know, building a, putting a bunch of layers together. And as you can see, there's a lot of trainable parameters, 11 million. And uh, with these images, we were already able to have the highest accuracy of 62%, which is already higher than just selecting at random one out of seven categories. Then we decided to go ahead with transfer learning. And transfer learning is really important in machine, uh, in, in data science, because you can take the work of someone else with a huge data set, huge amount of images, a lot of works, uh, a lot of hours gone into training a model, and then adjust it to your own problem, to your own number of, of categories. So with VGG16, there's already an improvement of 78% without any adjustment. Finally, we decided to go ahead with the big guy, ResNet 152, which is, stands for 152 layers, version two. It's another model based on transfer learning. And in this case, you see 58 million parameters. That means 58 million possible things to adjust in the model for it to work properly. But since it already comes with the trained weights, we only had to take a look at about 14,000. So as you can imagine, with all that, we came to 84% without any adjustment. It could classify it into the right category. We took all, all that and put it on uh, the mach a machine running on Google Cloud Run Service to be able to pull it with an API framework. And for the app, which we are about to show you, we used Heroku with a Streamlit framework. So let's take a look at, at the app now. Uh, this is like, a, have you ever wondered like when you're how, about to put something in the trash, like is it, is it recyclable? Can I do something else to help the recycling process? So you have now ways assist to help you with this and it's really easy to use the app. It's actually you grab your phone, you take a photo of the, of the trash that you have, upload the photo on the app, and actually the, the, the app will tell you, will classify the trash for you. It will tell you that it's either recyclable, if it's either composed, or if it's gonna, it's, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be trash, right? And it, it will also give you a very useful, useful tips that helps you with the, helps improve really well the, the recycling process. So let's take a, a look at the app now. So let's try to classify our first picture. And this is so, these are pictures that we took ourselves. Like uh, the first picture is like a, a drink, uh, a beer that I have at lunch. Uh, and then I, I was wondering after drinking my beer, well, well, is this recyclable? What am I gonna do with this? So let's ask Waze Assist uh, about the, to classify this for me to see if they can, it can help me. And it's actually metal. And, uh, and it's telling me that it's recyclable, right? <laughs> And, it, and it's also giving me a cool tip. It's telling me, okay, remove any debris and contaminants. It's, that, it's actually really important in the process to avoid contamination and to, to help you know, uh, the, the process up, uh, upstream. So let's try with another one. Let's try with uh, another image. And it's actually 
something that I've been drinking a lot because I've been talking a lot today. And it's just, and I made the same questions, like, what would I do with this? To, can I do something to improve like the recycling process? So let's ask again to the waste of ships uh, to see what, what I can tell. And it's plastic and it's recyclable. And I also got my cool tip as well, like uh, which, which I can use if I, if I want. And let's go to the last one. And it was actually like the best part of uh, this morning. Like it was my breakfast. Sorry for the photo, it's not that beautiful. It was awesome, it was really good, it's a bagel. And I, I was wondering, like I haven't finished my bagel and I was like, uh, okay, what am I gonna do this, with this? Do you guys can guess what is the, what type what type of trash is this? Uh, okay, so let's ask, uh, wait, assist to see what it is. And it's actually composed. And it's something like, uh, and you can actually predict that it's composed and you have your, your awesome tip, but I didn't pay attention because at the end I finished my bagel. It was so good that I, I, I had to do it, but, uh, but, uh, but I got this, so. But we didn't stop here, so. That is right. We did not stop here. Waste classification is good, but what if I'm at the waste processing facility and I want to detect what goes where, you know? And that's our second solution. It's waste detection. For that, we used an algorithm called YOLO ver version 5. That's right. It's not you only live once, it's you only look once. And as the name says, it's uh, called that because instead of Typically, old um, versions of this type of jobs, they used a lot of classifiers, a lot of algorithms on one image to be able to detect. But this one, it divides it into regions and it only looks at the image once, hence the name. You only look once. Without going too much into the details, the training here, instead of just assigning images categories, here you actually need to provide bounding box labels. So you need to be able to tell the algorithm, well, where exactly on the image here is that object? Where is the metal? Where is plastic? Where is cardboard? And as you can see with the numbers, zero, one, two, three, those, those are categories. Is it plastic? Is it metal? Is it uh, something else? And because this is a rather computationally expensive job, we had to rent a, a Google Cloud GPU virtual machine. So without further ado, let's see what this baby can do on a video of my household trash that I took yesterday. So as you can see, it can, only de it can already detect cardboard and plastic fairly accurately, of course, with some things, but you can, you will always uh, also able to see that one of the hurdles to overcome in models like this is because the textures of materials are so similar, more data and more training is required in order to do a nice job. So as you can see, we've achieved great things. We can sort recyclable waste at uh, fairly high levels of accuracy, up to 90%. And we've also come up with a software that recognizes objects presented in a video feed. There are, however, some limitations to date. The size of the data set. So far, we, we have more or less 3,000 images. We'd like to grow that in the future. Crowdsourcing might be a way. Capturing subcategories, being able to say that something is plastic is great, but it would be even better to be able to say it's a plastic bottle. We are going there. And up to this point, we have no sorting hardware. Partnering with a startup that's active in that area would be something we are really interested in. Now, the future is bright. In particular, it has three things in it. Engaging with sorters, people who sort waste and people who sort other stuff. That's something that's definitely on the agenda for us. We'd also like to inspire sorting enthusiasm among the general population, and we plan to do this through gamification and third-party bonus schemes. Details to be worked out, but it's definitely on the, on the agenda, and we hope that in doing so, we contribute to create a better world by better sorting. Thank you very much.
<laughs> Good job, everyone. It's amazing what you managed to achieve, and there's a great potential. If we have, you know, people from the city of Montreal or the city of Toronto or even Cascade who are looking at us uh, tonight, you should definitely reach out to these guys. They've achieved something quite impressive in just eight days, maybe. So congratulations. And I would like to, again, we finished with the pitch, so I would like to hear a huge round of applause again for all the groups. Congratulations for the hard job, the hard work. And now we can open the question period, actually. So if you have any question in the room, we have a microphone that we can pass on and you can ask your questions. We will also uh, look at the questions we receive in uh, Livestorm and uh, Facebook and LinkedIn. So any question, feel free to ask them. It could be technical. It could be about the, their experience. Uh, and if uh, I'm talking to the graduates, if you want to uh, answer the questions, you can come on stage and answer the question. So, so as to start the ball, I will start with one question. I'm curious to learn about you. Could you tell me what uh, you found the most uh, exciting and challenging part of your bootcamp? Any volunteer to answer this question? <laughs> no. We have alumni in the room, they could answer as well, actually. <laughs> and also in Livestorm, I saw many of them. So anyone, Eugene, you want to answer? And Dylan, Dylan, please. Ah, uh, yeah, you can take a microphone over there. So hi, um, definitely the most exciting part and the most intense part was the project week. Uh, I feel like everything we learned just came together and we really just went full force implementing all the different things that we were taught. Um, it was a bit exhausting, but it was extremely rewarding and I thoroughly enjoyed it and I'd do it again in a second. Actually, we also have Isabel with us. Isabel, if you want to answer any questions, feel free just to uh, open your camera and answer. Thank you. Anyone else? I think, Eugene, you wanted to come? Or I wanted you to come. <laughs> so the question is, the more challenge you go, the more exciting. You can answer both. And after, we'll go to Isabel. The most uh, challenging one is to get uh, little details that absolutely do not want to cooperate working. It's like you spend a lot of time on just small things that impede your progress. And I kind of had that experience before, but uh, yeah, the important thing is just to not stop, to absolutely keep trying, you know. And uh, not only that, but uh, we had the wonderful support of teachers. That was a huge help and a big shout out to, th to them. And I guess at the same time, the most exciting thing was when you actually finally solved that problem and got it to work. So when we got that video working, I was, I was ex excited. Yeah. Isabel? Yeah. Oui, un petit délai pour moi, donc uh, je m'excuse. I'm sorry if there's a, uh, there's a little delay for me, so. Um, well, the whole experience was really challenging and really re rewarding. I, in fact, I was telling my friends that I'd never been challenged as much, uh, in, like intellectually, since a long, long time. Um, and for me, that was a great thing. I had bits and pieces of knowledge before, and I was telling the, the, the Wagon team before the, the boot camp, I need to put all of those together. And that's what Le Wagon did. It really filled the holes that I had. Now I feel that I've got a really a solid core that I can build on. So that was really a, a great, uh, a great experience. The, the, and, and the team was so supportive. So that's really what made the, the, this experience so rewarding. Yeah. Thank you, Isabel. 
Thank you. So we have a couple of questions in uh, Livestorm. So I will start with the Anne-Marie uh, question. Hey, Anne-Marie. Um, if you could speak to yourself from nine weeks ago, during the first week of the boot camp, what would you tell yourself? So what would you tell yourself, like imagine yourself the first week of boot camp? Anyone want to answer this question? Chidi, do you want to come? So nine weeks ago, I honestly don't think I'll be where I am. You see, after the very first week, I, I said to myself, come on, buddy, what are you doing here? <laughs> like, nothing was making sense. The coding, nothing was just making sense. But looking back at it right now, uh, I think it was worth it. So if I'm to say to myself, what would I have done nine weeks ago, I would say, go for it all over again. Thank you. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, for me, I guess uh, I'll use Stefan's classic phrase, it'd be uh, trust the process. <laughs> it's kind of, uh, yeah, it's easy to get discouraged sometimes because uh, it's a lot thrown at us at the same time, but uh, just be patient and uh, yeah, trust the process. So that, that'd be my answer. Yeah. All right, and got a question that is actually two questions. So for the data science batch, how has the boot camp changed your perception of what AI is? And then for uh, the web dev batch, uh, how has the boot camp changed your perception of what coding is? Well, I guess it's not just that it changed it so much as it confirmed it. Like, uh, you know, people say, <laughs> If people say like, uh, oh, AI, you know, like artificial intelligence, but really like it's, it looks like it, but it's still, it's still math. It's still algorithms. It's still points that are trained, uh, you know, and then produce a result that's similarly magic, but there is a way to explain that. So that was good to, to clarify in my head at least. Thank you, uh, Eugene. There's actually a couple of questions for the Waste Assist team, so uh, you can uh, choose uh, um, who uh, wants to answer, and you can be all of, all, all of you on stage as well. So Samuel, uh, hi Samuel, is asking, do you take into account the recycling possibilities of each location? So that's actually, there's two questions in, in his question. So do you take into account the recycling possibilities of each location? And also, do you differentiate the different plastics? Well, actually, this is kind of uh, this is something that we might do in the future. But, uh, but of course, as, as my colleague says, the data set was like kind of limited. So we only have uh, limited data and we didn't have all kind of plastics. We know there's a lot of plastics and more of them, some of them are recyclable, some of them are not. And, uh, but it's, uh, as we said, it's, so, it's something about the data and the time that we have to recollect data that uh, limit us, us a little bit. So uh, uh, no, we know it's, there's much more information there and not only in plastic, there's a lot of stuff like even in the object detection, there's also like uh, more um, objects, uh, you know, categories that we can include. But, uh, but exactly, it's, it's like, uh, it's, it's a matter of time, but uh, yeah, we know we're there, but we didn't take it in account this time. Thank you. So I have another question for you guys. Uh, did you train immediately for the different materials or you started with few at the beginning and then added more materials? Well, actually it was uh, at the beginning we trained with the, the same materials, uh, but it was like we did, we did like a couple of things like the object detection for the image recognition. Yeah, it was 
all at the same time. We did improve a little bit of the data, like we used the first, uh, there was like a data set in Kaggle, we used that one, and then we took another data set and we just fit a little bit more uh, uh, images to the, to the model. And then we also took our sales photos uh, and we fit them to the model as well. So we, we in the process, you know, to improve the model, we did in include some images. And, uh, and in the object recognition, it was uh, as well, like uh, we, we, pick, we pick some uh, classes, like in this case, four categories, and we just fit them to the, to the model. But yeah, it was like a, you know, working process. Uh, we, as, as we wanted to improve the accuracy, we include more and more stuff. Thank you. There is another one, but you can you can switch if yeah, you want. I, I just <laughs> let one of the guys. So uh, Puya is uh, telling great work. Did you look at the precision and recall levels of your models? Uh, unfortunately, no. But we took uh, time to um, so the precision and recall is important when you do the uh, convolutional uh, convolutional matrix. Uh, this was, as we said, that since this is a proof of concept, so we only started with seven categories of materials, right? And to, to reiterate on that the previous question, yes, it's in our plans, right, to do like plastic number six or plastic number three. And uh, some plastics are not um, recyclable here, but they may be recyclable in other, in other areas. So yes, it really depends on location. But for the, uh, uh, obviously for recall and accuracy, our main, um, our main um, stat when we were training our model was accuracy. Recall uh, also, but uh, to whoever ha asks this question, yes, this is absolutely important to look at, uh, specifically when the task is like you want to classify something as often as possible, or when you get something right, you want to be 100% sure that you get it right or there could be bad consequences for this. So yes, it's a great, great question regarding that. Thank you, Eugene. And there's uh, another one, uh, Puya asked, what was your team technical background before starting your bootcamp journey? So we have, a, a, again, a diverse, uh, diverse, very diverse team. Well, the team had a very uh, varied um, technical background. That was myself and there were three engineers. Uh, my, my own background is in linguistics and business studies. So um, it was an interesting journey to get to know how uh, work, is, work is done in a completely, a completely different area. And I think as far as, you, you're in electrical engineering, Eugene? Ele electronics? Um, and uh, GD did things to oil platforms, and you, you, you also did things to oil platforms, didn't you, in a former life. So, so we came from not quite all, all walks of life, but a fair number of them. Thanks, Joachim. So you see, yeah, congratulations again. So one, one other question which could be answered by uh, the other um, web dev uh, groups. Uh, what's the one feature you would have liked to code but didn't get the time? So do you want to express yourself on maybe the one feature you would have wanted to, to implement? Isabel. Yeah, I can start for sure. Um, for me, it's adding the, the option for a participant to add their note, their tasting note during the event. So they can document what they tasted, what they liked. Uh, so they can go back to it later on and remember because that's, uh, you know, not always easy to remember in the, in the future and to compare. So for me, that was it. That was the, the note taking uh, option on the app. Thanks, Isabel. Andrea, please. These heels were a bold choice, OK. Um, I would say one thing we really did want to code, I know I specifically wanted to code, was um, a feature that would track the amount of hours volunteered in total 
um, both at specific organizations and, you know, at any of the organizations that you had volunteered at since using the app. Um, I think that's a super motivating feature. Um, you know, if you think of like sober clocks, for example, it's like the, you know, you start from, you know, I guess like when you're sober and then you keep like keeping track of all of the time you spend. And I've, I've heard that that's a very motivating feature. Um, and that's kind of the point of the app, right? Would just be to help people find something they're passionate about, but to help them stick with it too. And like to find the joy in helping other people. So I think that would be effective. Thanks, Andrea. And we have one last question here for Waste Assist. Uh, will the app develop to be an educational app? Uh, I mean, the users are interested in the recycling solution and also learning more about recycling. For example, the app can tell me that the rotten fruits can become enzymes for fertilizer and natural cleaning agents. Do you want to comment or answer on this? Well, what the app does so far is large, largely educational. It tells you that your plastic bottle is a plastic bottle. You sort of knew that, didn't you? Um, so, so the added value is more that it also tells you what to do with it. This may not always be true in the, in the future. I think this app is also, it has also a great potential for crowdsourcing of information, for working on environmental protection, cleaning up certain areas after first surveying what's out there and so on and so forth. The possibilities, while not totally unlimited, are varied and we are looking forward to exploring those. Yeah, so also in addition, um, we look forward to using the app as a way of reducing re uh, residential waste. So more like motivating the users, you know, so some form of motivation, like a reward, um, maybe in Bitcoin, in cash money, uh, whatever, you know, that can come in just to motivate people to, yeah, classify their waste. Thank you. Thank you, Chidi. I think we have one question here in the room. Uh, Go ahead. Sure. Yeah. Uh, question for the data science. <clears throat> so there is a perception like with data and statistics, like, but when you join the bootcamp, do you have to be really good at math or do you have like to have a background in the way of like math or like if you didn't know like a lot of math, did you struggle way more than someone who's an engineer? Sorry. <laughs> Well, actually, I believe that math knowledge will facilitate things. Like, uh, there's a lot of, because as Eugene says, what is behind all this is math algorithm. So you do know how, if you want to really understand what's inside the, all the algorithms, all the models, you will have to know, have a knowledge of math. You don't have to be like a like guru, math guru or something like that, but it's really good and it will help a lot if you know math, like uh, statistics, math, everything is based on that. So uh, if you really want to understand, maybe create models, improve models, know how they work, G, uh, math is definitely something that you will have to know, but uh, yeah, exactly, that's what I think. Thank you, Luis. Eugene, do you want to add something? Just a small addition. Well, like to, to get into the program, we had to actually like take a small test for uh, like uh, minimum Python knowledge and, and math, but it's things like, you know, uh, linear algebra, uh, a bit of derivatives, a bit of, so, it's something that you can nowadays, you know, with the, um, with the enormous amount of knowledge on the internet, you can get into this program only if you decide to take a crash course on, I don't know, YouTube or whatever. And then, yes, of course, it's going to be harder maybe to grasp some things, but for those that are really motivated, you know, get some maybe knowledge of Python and then get some knowledge of what's be be behind uh, most of today's like maybe technology in terms of math and then you're you're on a good track thanks eugene so actually we have one last question uh, Anne marie uh, uh, you have a question no 
Okay. Anne Marie asks, uh, did you have an exciting aha moment when working on your project that you want to share with us? So what was your aha moment? Do you have any? When, every time you understand something, <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> every time your brain is wow, exploding brain. Dylan, do you want to add something? Yes. I've had um, multiple aha moments where my code isn't working and then I realize either there's a spelling mistake or I'm just coding on the wrong part of the page, so yeah. <laughs> So thank you, thank you all. So I wanted again, please let's give them again and again and again a huge round of applause. And now we will give you something. Stefan, I'm welcoming Stefan on stage. Stefan is our lead teacher, batch owner for the web dev. So I'm gonna call your name to give your certificate. So, Andrea, so you can join the stage to, for the picture there, yeah, in the middle. So, congratulations. You can keep, keep applauding. It's nice to hear. Chidi. Congratulations, Chidi. Dylan. Congrats, Dylan. <laughs> Etienne. And I'm calling Eugene. Bravo. Isabel. So, Isabel, she's here. Isabel, your certificate. <laughs> Joachim, congrats. <laughs> Luis, bravo. <laughs> Nadav, so, good job. Congrats, Nadav. <laughs> Tien, please come. Good job. Van, congratulations. And finally, uh, Isabelle again. <laughs> so, so congrats, everyone. A few words before uh, we jump on the party. Um, of course, all this would not have been possible with the help of all our teacher teaching teams. So uh, massive, massive thank you. Uh, congrats for all of you, for all the dedication, the passion you, you, you transfer uh, every day to our students, your uh, happiness uh, and um, your positive attitude, even in the most stressful situations. So thank you. I'm very, very grateful to have, to know you, to have you uh, in our team. And I want to hear here again, some applause for our great teachers. So massive congrats again for all of you. You nailed it. You can be very proud. Uh, it's just the beginning. You know that. Uh, it's really nice to see the, the outcome of your hard work. And you know that it opens so many, so many paths. So, of course, you all deserve a nice uh, celebratory drink that we will have after and a restful weekend for sure. But we'll see you back on Monday to look at your future and help you in your uh, next step after Le Wagon. Uh, thanks again, everyone. Thanks for watching us. Uh, thanks for being here. We really, really appreciate having you uh, here with us tonight. If you are hiring, looking for talent, uh, you can uh, reach out to me, I'll be happy to, to connect with you with uh, our graduates and alumni. 
Um, we still have a few batches open for this fall. We have uh, one uh, full-time web development and data science. There are still some seats available, but applications close very soon. So if you are interested in joining one of our next sessions, I invite you to um, go online and apply. Or if you want some information, have questions, we run an info session next week. So you can uh, register to, to ask any questions you would have about our bootcamp. And uh, we keep uh, sharing our love for coding. So we have a workshop coming in September to encourage more people learning how to code, especially women. So there is a, a workshop to uh, learn how to code uh, this uh, next uh, September 18th. And if you want to keep uh, hearing about us, uh, if you are willing to join more events uh, with Le Wagon, you can join our meetup group. We'd be happy to see you in other events. So thanks a lot. Uh, it's time for us to go now. Have a great time. Have a great weekend. Thanks for being here again. Bye bye.